Hi everyone, so I'm glad to have you here on the third part of this tutorial. So if you missed part one and part two, you can find them down below in the description. So this video will be more about like the errors that I made uh, during part one. So these weren't included in the first video, but I've decided just to add like the failures as well. So because you can learn a lot from it. So this project was all about making a bullet bike board. So it's a Larry versus Harry um, cargo bike that I did for a friend of mine. So I didn't make like the bike, but the plate that is used to uh, travel with, so to carry some cargo on it. So in these parts, I've explained you how I've made that part using a honeycomb. And in part two, I talked a bit more about fin finishing everything. So by puncturing some holes through it, adding some threads and finishing the entire board with like a, um, a high gloss, making the hinges and, um, yeah, getting it like ready as a finished part. But this part will be a bit more about like the errors you can make with the bio epoxy. So that you can see in this shot, so it's an um, CLV uh, epoxy resin. So it's a bio sap, um, easy composites distributed it. And I've tried it and I've just going to show you a bit more about like the the interesting points that I find out. So this was a failure, but I also include like how it could be done. And uh, that's what you'll see in this video tutorial. If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like. So if you follow me through this introduction, this is a bit more about like a failure video, but I think it's very important to share the failures as well, because in the composites industry, I would say like 90% is just trial and error before you get like till the good finish. So I'll be talking a bit more about using this bio sap um, from easy composites. So it's a bio resin. So it was the first time I've used it. So I'm, I'm going to use this in a resin infusion. Um, in the previous tutorial, so in part one, you see me switch from the bio sap, so the super sap, into the regular infusion two resin, because I know I get good results with that resin. And this was a bit more about like the trial, because the good, like the coolest thing I could do is making um, a biotex material, so jute in this case, or it could be flax as well, by using a bio resin as well. So the first thing that I found out is that the resin isn't clear. So it's not good for like adding like a clear surface, like I would say like um, um, surfboards and things like that, because it's not super clear. Um, you're better off with like the glass cast or the XCR resin from Easy Composites, but it's not like bio then. So that was a bit of like a struggle I had um, inside, like I'm making um, like a, a biotex material and then adding like the irregular epoxy. So that was like a bit, like a mind a bit uh, in between using the right materials. But then um, like getting good results, it's maybe needed to get like the, the irregular epoxy. But I'll share you more about like the findings and what went wrong on this. So first thing you can see is that the resin is not clear. You only have a pot life of around 25 minutes. And for me, that's a big, like a big problem or a no go on big plates. But I decided to try it because I had like good faith into it. I even did like a live stream on my Facebook uh, going through this process. But the biggest problem is like the pot life. If you're going through a big infusion and you only get 25 minutes for mixture, normally even degassing and then infusing in 25 minutes, um, that can cause some problems of the resin kicking too fastly into the cup or even into the laminate. So I've decided to do this shot like in this tutorial um, on a one-to-one -one scale in speed. So this is just regular speeds. Normally I speed up all my videos during the infusion because like most infusion would take around 10 minutes and watching a 10 minute video, <laughs> watching a full infusion would be a bit boring. But here I decided to keep it one on one just to show you how slowly it gets. So this was for me already a stress point. So it's probably caused by the uh, thickness of the resin. So the resin isn't as um, 
low in viscosity like the infusion uh, so the IN2 epoxy resin um, that I normally use so it's very slow and at this point I already knew that it was going wrong I think like uh, if you're doing a lot of infusions and you see an infusion like this and you see how much you still have into your cup that will go into an exothermal stage would cause big problems so as well you can see I didn't have the time because you have only 25 minutes to mix everything and start the infusion so I didn't have the time to degas the resin so all the air bubbles you see here are caused by not uh, degassing the resin mostly you can you can get away with it if you go till the end of the infusion you close all the um, clamps and then just by pressure the bubbles will get um, smaller so because there is less vacuum and there is a good amount of resin it will it, it will make like the bubbles go smaller so this is exactly the same with infusion resin but I mostly degas it just to avoid already having those bubbles going into it in this shot you can see the infusion was finished so no more resin was going through so um, I did the first cup I think it was around 1.4 kilograms going all the way through but very slowly and then I had to mix extra resin but you have to know that in an infusion the further away from the inlet the slower it will get so I had to mix I think it was right around 500 grams more but it was sucking so slowly into the fibers uh, causing it to go into an exothermal reaction and not being able to add more fresh resin into it so what's the next cause is that it don't have enough resin into the parts and just distributing the resin that it already already had into the laminate onto like the, the biggest square feet or square meters as possible so you get a very low um, resin content like a ratio in between the fibers and the resin another cause was that as well that the uh, bio materials will absorb a lot of uh, a lot of moisture and moisture and epoxy aren't the best friends the good thing about the uh, super sap is it's very low in risk to go into an ami amino blush like uh, moisture or low temperatures uh, getting onto it leaving like a, a dull skin so for that it's a good uh, thing to have it so what I did is so I didn't give up on the super sap but I gave up on that plate with super sap so I went into the regular infusion resin for uh, for that project but I still had in mind that I have to succeed in making like a good part using this super sap the first thing to do then is go smaller so I went with a smaller part just to see if it can infuse and what the results will be as well testing out the strengths of that super sap because like in my head I still cannot think that um, like a bio material or a bio epoxy can have the same strength so I didn't do tests about this um, but I think they won't be able to compete with the regular infusion resins the good thing about that bio sap is that it's um, it leaves a low um, carbon footprint so um, it's better for the environment and as well as you read on the easy composites website they are not compromising into um, fields that can be used for food for example so it's plant-based uh, compared to petroleum based on the infusion epoxy resins or like regular uh, epoxy resins um, but it, ha it has a lower footprints on um, emissions and uh, all these bad Kind of thing so I love the fact that they still try to improve and get it into a better world I believe in the fact that this can be a good resin and maybe in the future if they develop develop it a bit further uh, we could all go to bio resins instead of using the uh, petroleum based resins so as you can see in this full shot you can already see that it's still a very slow infusion so that's like a very big stress factor while doing composites parts seeing like an infusion going very slowly because first of all you lose some time with the infusion because normally you do like multiple infusions on a day uh, so you still have to watch it um, but here you can see like after the demolding um, like under perfect circumstances the resin cured in a good state uh, leaving like the flax in a good finish so this is flax fiber uh, I really like it only you get some pin tr uh, print through so I think it's about the material and the materials still absorbing 
some resin after closing the inlet and outlet. How can this be fixed? Probably using an MTI hose will already fix these problems. Um, so this is the second part. Maybe I'll do a full tutorial about making these ukuleles. I have the mold making um, like uh, shots. So everything is on my hard drive. Just haven't found the time uh, to edit them. If you want to see them, leave a comment down below and I'll try to do my best to do like the, the full tutorial about this. This was more about sharing the shots on how it can succeed with the Biosap. So if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment and subscribe for future videos to come. Thanks for watching.